It's a mighty ship that now needs to master not just sea, but space too. The newest role aboard HMS Queen Elizabeth, a space specialist, all part of a growing recognition that warfare is no longer limited to land, sea and air. The battleground up here, crucial to conflicts down there. We are putting a liaison officer onto HMS Queen Elizabeth. She will be, I think, front and centre when it comes to, you know, day to day operations, you know, as well as having a, um, a daily weather brief, there'll be a daily space weather brief, you know, because that side of thing is important for satellite communications and so on. The UK military does already have a foothold in space. RAF Filingdales in North Yorkshire keeps a constant watch for incoming missiles and space debris. British personnel are also working with the US military on programme Artemis, a low orbit satellite that could beam live video into the cockpit of a fighter jet. But the recent defence review says the UK needs to be a much bigger player. To help, the government's pledged nearly six and a half billion pounds over the next decade, around one and a half billion of it going into a new space command. Now, I think it's clear from the integrated review that space is a very much an enabling domain. You know, as the chief said, you know, I just our, our normal lives, let alone the military aspects of things, are dominated by space, by GPS, by communications, by um, satellite TV, you know, timing, all sorts of different things. Um, you know, we need to understand that side of it. We need to, um, you know, from a military perspective, we'll be looking at space debris, we'll be looking at, um, you know, other satellites, conjunctions, those sorts of things. Space Command will be the operational end of Britain's space programme. It will look at ways of defending UK assets in space from any sort of attack and oversee plans for the first British satellite launch, scheduled to take place from Scotland next year. So where else is the money going? Well, five billion has been earmarked for Skynet 6, an updated satellite communications system for the British military. There's also plans for a new space academy to train a new generation of defence space specialists. And a new intelligence, surveillance and reconnaissance system, an eye in the sky, the information beamed back from a cluster of British-built satellites. Certainly in recent past, um, quite a lot of what is happening in the space domain as in some of the other domains actually, is highly classified. So I think what, what we need to do, and I know the US are looking at this as well, is start to look at wh where we can talk to uh, the general public as well as everyone else in terms of why we are doing certain things, why we are putting a particular satellite up there. China and Russia are NATO's main space adversaries. Both Beijing and Moscow have already tested missiles that can destroy an orbiting satellite. There's currently 2,500 satellites in space and China is making 40 heavy launches this year alone. UK Space Command is due to be operational next April. Its first job, reducing the UK's vulnerability. With space now third on a list of 18 potential threats, Britain's armed forces are increasingly facing traditional foes across a very different and vast frontier. Simon Newton, Forces News. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to like and subscribe to our channel.